bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Two stakes races on tap at Aqueduct for three-year-olds. Race number three is for sprinters. It's the Jimmy Winkfield, three quarters of a mile. Let's take a look at this field. $100,000 is the purse. Only five in here, but as you can see from our colleague David Aragona's morning line, it's pretty evenly matched. Yeah, I do think it's pretty evenly matched. Uh, there, everybody's so lightly raced, Dan, but I think every one of the horses that's entered in this field has a representative race that you could say that might be good enough uh, to win this race. I don't know that the pace is going to be that fast in here. So maybe that's an advantage for a horse like the three uh, cool cat man do. Um, but I think there are a lot of different ways to go, even though it's a short field. I think it's a very good point about the pace, and it's a nice segue into our time form U.S. pace projector. Even though these horses are sprinters, they're far from blazers. Cool Cath Mandu did show speed last time out going gate to wire. Joey Freshwater, I think, has some speed. I think Clubhouse is going to get right up close to the pace for Pletcher and Velasquez. Yeah, I think he'll come out of there and, and be forward as well. But I think, you know, there are several different horses who could be forward in this race, Dan, if they decided to. And among those is the one, uh, Joey Freshwater. I won't be surprised if Jose Lescano is way more aggressive with this horse this time because he has shown speed in all three of his starts so far. But in the last two, he's had outside posts. So they were just sort of content to track paces um, from the outside. But from the rail here, they could easily go. Joey Freshwater is seeking his third consecutive victory. Let's watch his most recent start. He's first off the Linda Rice claim in a starter optional claiming event. He sat just off the leaders, as Mike mentioned, on the outside. I thought the pace was solid considering this is a muddy track. And Joey Freshwater, despite hopping back to his left lead in the final furlong, wins comfortably with a good figure. Yeah, he does. He's he's always going by this horse on the lead. You're going to see the runner up there, um, Swifty Devils, just going to fight him down to the finish. But um, I think Joey Freshwater always had this thing through about the final furlong or so. I liked the way that he finished it off. I really liked his win two starts back, even though he was dropped in class that day. Um, I just feel like this horse is a major, major player in here, and I won't be surprised if he does make the lead. The number two daydreaming boy earned a stakes place in two starts back at Parks, going three quarters of a mile. Then he faced one of the Midlantic region's better three-year-old sprinters in Recruiter last time out over a wet track in the Parks Juvenile. He's kind of raced evenly that day, but that Recruiter is pretty good, Mike. I think daydreaming boy fits with these sort of horses. He may need a little bit of pace to run at. Yeah, I agree. He did face a good horse last time. He also faced a good horse two starts back that how great is Nate undefeated as a two year old four for four. Um, so this horse has been in a couple of tough spots out of town recently. I, Dan, personally felt like he was the toughest call in the race, if only because the only win so far just came when he got absolutely loose on a pretty easy pace on a wet track. But he's run fine in his two starts since then. Cool Katmandu is the number three. Let's watch his most recent start. Start number two of his career for trainer Charlie Baker. This race is a three-quarter of a mile maiden special over a sloppy track. Cool Katmandu looked like for a brief instant on the backstretch was going to be pressured by Clubhouse, who we see getting tired in here, and he'll eventually run fifth. Clubhouse looked like he had to check a bit at the half-mile pole, and then it was all over but the shout in Cool Katmandu by many lengths. Yeah, it wins easy here. He does take a pretty big step forward as well. Maybe the sloppy track had something to do with it. Certainly making the early lead um, relatively easily had something to do with it. Um, I guess you could just say Clubhouse didn't really care for that wet track after breaking from the rail. I don't know, Dan. This horse definitely improved last time. I can't say that I'm sold on him, but he ran pretty well in his most recent start. And if he repeats that, he could be tough in here. Number four, Drew's Gold is a perfect two for two for trainer James Chapman, who consistently gets horses to seemingly overperform. He was a debut winner at Churchill Downs. He had a little bit of a physical setback. Chapman gave him time, and then he found a great spot for him at Laurel, start number two, first level allowance. Drew's Gold didn't break well at all in this race. He broke last. He then comes with a four wide bid into the stretch, and he looks good in the lane. This is not the strongest field in the world, but he got a good figure, and he did it off a layoff after being compromised at the start start yeah i like this win for him um he just sort of after you know hopping a little bit at the start to wind up last he just sort of did everything right and i like the move that he made off the turn very easy win in fast time uh chapman comes right back two weeks later into this race and i feel like this horse is going to be tough 
right back. I also, Dan, really liked this horse's maiden win where he did not get the kind of trip that always leads to success going five, but made another big run off the turn and one going away. He's got to get out of the gate a little bit better. He didn't break great on debut. He didn't break great last time. He can't keep doing that. That's really the key here because, as you mentioned, he's broke slope twice. There may not be a ton of pace in here, and this is the toughest test he's faced. The five is clubhouse. He completes the field. And you have to make the argument that this expensive son of Spitestown has been a bit of a disappointment for Todd Pletcher. It took him six starts to graduate. He did so last time out going seven-eighths of a mile, but he couldn't have asked for a better trip. He was pressing a hopeless long shot, some 60-to-1 chance on the backstretch, took the lead as easy as pie, and goes about his business to win. I I think he's at his best when he can get right up close to the pace. I think he'll be sitting second off of Cool Cat Mandu. Let's find out how good he is. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's the, the real uh, way to look at him here, Dan. And, and listen, it's not like he's overmatched in this field, but maybe he has a little bit more to prove than some of the others do. Very soft field there. Perfect trip, as you mentioned. First time starters run second and third behind him. Um, so even as easy as he won, it's hard to really gauge him off of that. Um, although I will say, if you're going to give him the sloppy track excuse two back, it's not like his dirt debut back in November. It's not like that was a poor performance, Dan. That was a pretty good field. He ran fine in there. It'll be interesting to see if any of these horses stretch out on the New York Trail to the Kentucky Derby, or if they remain sprinting for races like the H. Allen Jerkins at Saratoga. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Jimmy Wingfield. We're both going with Drew's Gold, and the key for this race is the break. He has to get out of the gate. Yeah, he just needs to get out of the gate in this spot. I think he could fall into a good trip, though, if he does. And I really like both of his starts so far. Same exacta, 4125 for Mike, 4153 for me. The Jimmy Wingfield, one of two stakes races for three year olds at Aqueduct on Saturday. Good luck.